What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international cinematographer and colorist, and in today's video, I'm not only going to teach you guys how to properly expose for the Canon log found on the Canon EOS R, but also how to properly color grade it as well to get the most dynamic range out of your image and to get a premium cinematic look. I have also provided a free LUT down in the description down below that'll help you guys get easily from Canon log into Rec. 709, and I felt like this is the perfect time to make this video with the impending release of the Canon EOS R5 coming out, and with all of the people making the switch over to the 1DX Mark III and the Canon EOS R. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and get right into it. All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and the first thing we're going to talk about is exposure. When it comes to exposing log perfectly, I recommend using a monitor because I like to shoot for specific IRE values using a waveform when I'm exposing for a log image. Now, generally, the manufacturer will put out a recommended IRE value to expose for 18% gray, but in the case of the Canon EOS R, we did not find that. So I have two rules of thumb that I like to follow when I am exposing for a log image. The first one comes with my highlights. I like to make sure that they are peaking no more than 80% IRE. Now, if you're shooting into the sun, that's going to be hard. Again, these are things that I like to shoot for. They do not always come out perfectly. Now, when we're looking at this image, we can see right here that my skin tones are in the middle of the image. And when we look at our waveform, we can also see that our skin tones are right here. And when we look at the information, we see that they're peaking no more than 60% IRE and that the majority of them sit at 50% IRE. And that's exactly what we want. Any lower, and I find that the skin tones tend to get a little bit muddy. And furthermore, we do not want to underexpose log on the EOS R or any log profile in general because we're going to start getting noise in the shadows and in the image. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Let's move on to color grading. If you're going to be using the LUT that I provided, the first thing you're going to want to do is add a serial node. And you're going to want to apply your LUT in node 2 and resist the temptation to apply it in node 1. We are going to select the Canon Log to Rec. 709 LUT that I have provided, if my computer acts right. There we go. And then in node one, we can make all of our exposure corrections and set our black point to get the image that we want. You guys can see how easy it is to get a nice looking Rec. 709 image using the slot. I really want you guys to start thinking about nodes as exports. Each and every time you move on to a node, you bake in that correction from the last node. So that is why we work with node one because it's getting all of that raw data from the log image instead of trying to bake in the LUT and then make the corrections after that, not having all of that data. Now let me show you how to do this all from scratch and then we can create a look. So let's reset everything and we're gonna create three notes, one, two, and three. We're gonna go into open effects and apply a color space transform to node one and a color space transform to node three. In node one, in the color space transform, we are going to select our input. Now in this case, we shot in Rec 2020, that was what my HDMI out was set to, and the Canon Log on the EOS R is going to be Canon Log 2. That's the closest thing that I have found so far. From there, we're gonna convert into the Airy Alexa color space into the Airy Log C output gamma curve. And we can see here that our highlights went from 80 to 70% IRE, and that's exactly why we do that, to maintain that dynamic range, and the Log C curve does that perfectly. In node three, we're gonna go Airy Alexa, Airy Log C, because that was our output, and then into Rec. 709 as our output color space and output gamma. And then we're gonna tick on luminance mapping, and boom, there we are, a nice color graded Canon Log image. From there, in between node one and three, we're going to set our black point. And from here, I'm just gonna boost the low end of that just a little bit, not too much, just a little. And so this is what we're working with as our color graded image. Raise this up as well. I don't want it too dark. Right about there. 
So this is a perfectly good stopping point, but let's get a little bit more creative. Now for this look that I wanna go for, it is a cloudy day, so I wanna add in some coolness because right now it just seems too, too cheery and too bright for a cloudy day to have that gloomy cinematic feel. So we're gonna add a node, and from here we're gonna go into our qualification tab, and we're going to select the midtones of our skin. If you don't see the highlight, click on the little magic wand up here. And then I'm gonna add in my lips, just clean all of this up right here. That was a little bit too much. Let's go back and try that again. Remember, this is all trial and error. And then we're gonna get rid of the soft. And we're gonna add in some low soft in the saturation to get rid of all of the other tones that kind of match my skin. Add this in right there. And right about here is looking pretty good. Just to soften it up, we're going to add in a little bit of denoise. And we're gonna add in some clean whites. Right here is looking good. Now everything that we do will only affect our skin tones. And from here, we're going to want to start bringing in some cool tones. And so we're gonna go ahead and select our vector scope to highlight the color information of just our skin. And we're gonna go into the vector scope again, yep. And then the skin tone indicator, we wanna make sure that's on. Now we can see here, my skin tones are on the mark. These are perfect skin tones, but we wanna bring them back to neutral. So we're going to add in some blue. And right about here is looking pretty good. So we can see here that all we did was bring them back to neutral. See that? We took the warmth out of them, but this is still a nice black skin tone. Now, what I wanna do is I also wanna add in some coolness to the shadows because we know we're gonna be adding coolness to the entire scene too. So let's just go ahead and in the shadows, add in some coolness. Right about here is where I'm gonna want that. And then our highlights as well, we're gonna add in that same blue color right about here. Let's go ahead and tick this off. And as we adjust our low range, we can see those corrections come to life. So right about here. And then we just wanna adjust our high range. We can see, as we adjust our high range, we can see that take over. We just wanna adjust it until it's just in the highlights. So right about here. It's looking good. So before, after. Now we have that coolness in our skin tones and it's gonna match the scene. So going back into our vector scope, we're gonna push in the orange color so you can see how we make that adjustment, how it changes in the vector scope over here. We just wanna push in that standard orange color for skin tones modestly, just right about here. Now going back and looking at it before, after, we have nice neutral skin tones and we'll just add in a bit of saturation, just like that. So before and after, we've brought our skin tones back to neutral, just a slight adjustment. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our look. So we're gonna left click, add serial, and then left click on node five, add layer. We're gonna select the alpha output and then we're gonna to wanna to make sure we come back into node four and turn off that vector scope. Now using our knowledge of color theory, we're just gonna add in teal to everything but the highlights. So we're gonna push in a dark blue into our shadows, and we're going to go ahead and pull in a blue into our midtones. Now we did not see that take effect. That is because we have to adjust our low and our high range so we're gonna drop our low range and now we're starting to see those teals come in. And now you can see how the skin tone is really starting to match the scene as well. And then in our highlights, we're going to adjust the high range until it's where we want it. So this is all to satisfaction. And right about there is looking pretty good. So before, after, and now we can see we have that coolness in the shadows the coolness and the highlights of the skin and everything is looking pretty good so far. The last thing I wanna do though here is we have 
uh, it's just too blue in the sweatshirt. So let's go ahead into our curves and we're gonna go to luminance versus saturation. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop down this point at the very end and then we're gonna raise it up and we're just gonna create a curve until we get a nice black sweatshirt. So right about here, it keeps our sweatshirt black, but just brings in that coolness to the rest of the scene. Finally, our last step is to go ahead and add some stylization. So I said I wanted this to be dark. So in node eight, we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to drop the end of the white point. Looking at our waveform, right about there is where we're going to leave that maybe raise it just a little bit. So before and after our scene is coming together, the last thing we need to do is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some film grain. And in Node 9, go to Resolve Effects Texture and add film grain. We're gonna use 35 millimeter film grain. I'm gonna turn up the gain strength all the way to 100, up the opacity just a bit. And zooming into about 200, I'm gonna bring down the size. And then we're just gonna change the texture. Right about there is looking pretty good. Take it out, and then maybe we'll just pull the opacity down just a smidge. And right about there is our before and our after. And that is a pretty good looking scene. If you want your skin tones just a little bit more on the cooler side, you can always go in back into that node and add in a little bit more blue and then you have even more realistic looking skin tones for the colors we have again before and after. And that is how you color grade Canon Log, add a look and stylize it. As you guys can see, once you nail your exposure, color grading your image really couldn't be that easier. Do not let Log intimidate you guys. Don't forget to head to the link in the description down below to pick up your free LUT to get you into Rec. 709 from Canon Long. And if you guys wanna take your color grading to the next level, be sure to check out my DaVinci Resolve color grading course. This course will take you from the beginning steps of simply learning the interface all the way to my insider tricks on how I get premium looks out of all of the images that I capture. A link is in the description down below. That's it for this video, guys. If you guys liked it, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just wanna give up on life, remember, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired. And as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.